Thanks for storing, staying with us. Um, the story about Gwemeleke, uh, the greatness of Lauren Femi. Uh, the young lady greatness. in Abuja, I'll come to, I'll come to you, Toby, in a second to give us the, um, the full story. The young lady who was stabbed in the moving vehicle in Abuja, thrown out of the vehicle and rushed to Maitama Hospital. The report, according to Punch, was that she was taken to the hospital and they refused to take care of her. Um, since that story broke, the, the National Assembly has instituted a committee to investigate the, someone, the IGP actually, to come and give a report on what happened. Um, they're also finding out from the, um, the minister, FCT, to see what's going to be, what, 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 is, what he's doing to um, tackle the issue of insecurity, even within Abuja. But there's so many angles to this story. The issue of insecurity, the fact that somebody could stab somebody in a moving vehicle, how is that? Who is monitoring? Who is ensuring? Who is looking for the killers? The, 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 the killer. The second part is the fact that she was not accepted in the hospital. Allegedly not accepted in the hospital. We thought it was the um, it was the right thing, the human thing for hospitals mm -hmm. to at least treat um, an injured person first before finding other 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 other, other documentation um, to follow. But. Today's conversation really is to readdress this issue, which we just talked about so many times on this show. But this is an opportunity to bring this matter to the fore. And we'd like our viewers to call us, those of you who have experienced something like this, please call in to share your stories so that government can hear and know what to do going forward and how to tackle this issue. Because obviously, somebody's not getting the memo from the hospitals as regards what the laws are or what's acceptable um, in, this, in matters like this. You can call us on numbers on your screen, 081. 076-41679-090-241-63440. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your UTVC so we can read your tweets. So let me just let, let me let you share the story again for those who, are, who, who didn't hear you doing the paper review. Her name and um, what, what you read about. Okay, so her name is Greatness Olorun Femi. Greatness, yeah. And so she had gone out on this particular day. She had entered one chance. These vehicles where um, kidnappers are usually in. Maybe sometimes with the aim of stealing from um, their victims, mm -hmm. and so she had gone in. Nobody knows what happened inside yeah. the vehicle, but she was stabbed and thrown out of the vehicle. And so people found her, took her to the hospital. She was taken to Meitama General Hospital, and she wasn't attended to. They were requesting for a police report till she actually passed on. So there were videos also stating um, that showed um, where she was actually in the car and they were requesting for people to attend to her but they didn't attend to her yeah, till okay. she passed on and so the f a few hours later it was confirmed that she was dead and so she was also a member of CIPM, very active member. They put out a report, so it was CIPM's report that actually like, gave a proper mm. breakdown. That's the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management. She was an exco in the Abuja chapter that gave a proper report of what happened actually and so Gemstone also, the leadership arm of Feladroto is um, um, foundation, foundation or something, or like a network, also put out a story. Um, surely Serenity Place, she right. volunteered there. So, so they the, also... The, the, the Federal report. Capital Territory Authority, FCT, um, put out a report saying that um, the victim of one child's greatness robbery was allegedly dead when she was brought into the Maitama Hospital. So they're claiming that she was brought in dead um, on that day. According to this report, on September 26, Greatness was said to have been pushed down from a moving vehicle, believed to be a one-chance uh, vehicle along the Meitama Kubwa Expressway. She was reported to have been severely injured and was rushed to the hospital for medical um, treatment. However, she was allegedly rejected by officers on duty at the healthcare. However, the FCTA uh, a statement by Buhari Yakasai, Assistant Director of the FCTA, um, Health Services and Environment Secretary said that the administration received information that the victim was brought into the hospital there. So there are conflicting reports, but this is one this is one opportunity to address situations where the victims weren't brought into dead. Hospital rejected the victims. But again, investigation is ongoing to know exactly what happened. Hopefully we'll get the get to the truth of this. Okay. But let me come to you ladies. What, what are your thoughts when you hear this? Okay, so um, first of all, there was a video on social media. Yes. And layman from watching across the screen yeah. that person in that vehicle didn't look dead to me at that time she seemed like she still had life within her and um, so I hope the investigation will be taken further to determine that what we saw in that video and what you know what is being said right now that she she 
she got there and she had already been dead by the mm. time she got to the hospital. You know, when you started this, when you mentioned it at first, I said that we've had the police come here many times to talk about the fact that this is not a requirement at all in an emergency. A patient should be responded to immediately. And, you know, we've asked there are different ways to even make sure if, if you're suspicious of the victim that's been brought in, is there a way to call the police to have that patient handcuffed to the bed or have a police standing outside their room, you know, until they come to, you know, and if they are indeed um, suspects of a crime, at least the police is right there. But let the life be saved just because it's better to save even a criminal than to lose an innocent life, mm. you know. But for the... For, we to, for, for us to keep seeing this happen over and over again, it says to me that there must be something going on in reality, the implementation of this policy. Have hospitals still found themselves in trouble for attending to victims? You know, because whether we like it or not, this is Nigeria, and what has always been the case is that we know you come on TV and you would say one thing, but in reality, what happens? People on ground will say, but this is not how it's happening. So are hospitals still finding themselves getting in trouble with the police if they attend to victims without getting a police report? Because the, the sort of people that work in a health uh, facility, nurses and doctors, you would expect that what would move them, first of all, is just that empathy. Okay. You no know, one, the, 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 the zeal to want to just save a life. Right. So I don't even know how some you, a person can watch as life is just leaving a person and think that, you know, if you don't have a police report, I'll let you go. I've, I've heard so many times of nurses and doctors where they have patients who are unable to pay their bills, you know, and they need... Um, and they need health intervention, they give it to them. So why is it that you bring someone who is bleeding, who is obviously, obviously needs help at that point, and then you close your doors to them? So mm. there has to be something that's happening on the ground. Let hospitals and patients and families of patients tell us exactly what's happening on the ground. For when they bring victims in, who, you know, how, how do they relate, how does the police relate with the hospital after if right. they've given them treatment. Let me come to you, Ronke, your thoughts when you... Well, I, li I like to align too much with Miriam because listening to the story, I'm wondering why is it that hospitals are always on the defence? It's not too far from the mobile tissue. You know, every day somebody just posts something and you wonder, why are we trying to change the story even after the person is gone? I mean, just like Miriam said, is there a police, um, a police issue with the hospitals that make them feel like they just have to maintain a stand and say, hey, it's always the person was brought in dead. I'm wondering why good Samaritans, as it was described in the article, would pick someone who was already dead and take the person to the hospital and not say the person was dead. So definitely, um, it seems like they are still counting claims like um, the headline reads so many people coming up with different issues but maybe they should conduct an autopsy that will throw more light into the particular time of death and also mm -hmm. help in the investigation exactly. but um, our condolences to the families and I'm wondering also how do we regulate all of this all of these taxes so it's good to know that it's not um, uber boat and the reformed mm -hmm. ones how, who, who is safe? It's no longer boss. Exactly. So there are other ah, issues. Yeah. Yeah, there are yeah. other issues. So as, as much as we are investigating what happened to greatness, mm. we also need to tackle the issue of insecurity, how we're protecting oh. our um, people who are entering public oh. transportation, yeah. how, how we're ensuring the safety. Are the bus stops um, under some kind of a... Um, watch? Or, you know, they know yeah. you have CCTVs across mm. major highways. You know what's going on. But you see... I hate to share this story. I mean, I've shared it many, many years ago, and for many people who are probably watching the uh, view for the, for the show for the first time may have not heard it, but I've shared this story many years ago, and because I, I experienced exactly what happened in this situation before, mm -hmm. and and that that traumatic experience has never left me, and I, and I, I didn't think that many years down, maybe ten years, over ten years now ago, I'm still going to be talking about exactly the same thing, oh. mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's quite painful because, as, as Mariam has said, we've had several people come on this show to tell us that that's not supposed to be the case in, in, in issues of an emergency. I remember many years ago, again, back then, uh, I think it was 2005, 2006, around that time, 2004, um, when I, then Vlecky was not as big and as expanded as it is now, okay. and I was driving to, with my brother, I was going to my, to my sister or some sister's house or something. I can't remember where we were going to. So we were just passing. Some people were on the floor crowding a young oh, lady. And we were just wondering, why are they crying? I know me now, fresh from the U.S. I had this empathy. Mm. Oh, my goodness, what's going on? What's going on? I was like, let's drive past. So I said, mm, what's going on? So I had to ask him to park the car. 
And they were all surrounding a young girl, like 14 years old. She was pregnant. The baby was almost coming out. She had flies all mm. over, mosquitoes, everything all around. She was half dead. Yeah. And I said, let us get this girl to the hospital. So I got them a bag, they put a bag into the back seat, carried her, put it in my car. I said, we're taking this boy. My, my your younger brother, who's been living um, in Nigeria for a while, said, Mariah, this thing, you can't be doing that. I said, we have to take this girl to the hospital. We got to the hospital in Lekki, and immediately we walked in, we tried to get in the nurse, come, 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 come. They carried her, as they carried her inside, the doctor said, ah, this girl again, no, please, 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 we can't, we need, we need a police report, we need a police report. We now had to go back, get the police, to follow, to come again. Police said, ah, this lady again. But no, you know, the, whatever, whatever yeah, reason. there was nobody that could There was no for whatever reason, there were some issues. I don't know what happened with the girl, but nobody had the empathy yeah. to first save her life and her baby's life first. Mm -mm. Whatever issues, yeah. we would deal, deal with, with it later. So both the police had the time rejected, the hospital rejected. Guess what I had to do? Very, very nice. Yeah. I took the girl right back to where I found her. Oh! I, <laughs> what am I yeah. going to do? Yeah. And, I, 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 as, as depressing as it, I mean, that, that, I mean, I, I don't know if she even passed on or if oh God, somebody God. saved her, but till tomorrow, once in a while, when I see these stories, I remember that oh, yeah. time. Huh. I'm like, what could I have done? Because then we're thinking, the, if I had taken both... her to another hospital, someone would say, go to Ikoi. So if I carried her, she died in my car, what would that, what Yes, would that, that would have been. been... So, because I had to, like, I had a family member to follow, so that not, there was somebody yeah. from my family member that but The thing is that the police was also involved. They were also they... involved. <laughs> so I, I, I said, look, please let me just return her way. I, I don't want story. So that, that, that is a Nigerian hmm. story that I had at the time. Mm -hmm. I was hoping that by now, mm. the It'll information be... is out there that you. No matter who is injured in an emergency, safe first. Life first. Well, so it's quite painful and it's very traumatic. I've never taken that picture off my head. I still have the girl's face in my head right yeah. now as I'm speaking to you. I mean, you've shared that story and I have that story in my head. I've yes. told many people in my family that particular story. I think oh. I've had secondhand oh, yes. trauma from listening yes. to listen Just to imagine it. leaving someone in that state mm -hmm. and then to have to deal with stories like that 10 years after. Yeah. You know, as a Nigerian, you're just for it. This yeah. is the PTSD that these Nigerians are suffering. We want to hear stories like this and hear how it has become better. And yeah. then we can refer to how it used to be so terrible in the past. Yeah. What is happening that there's a police officer in the hospital in the same room yes. and there was no agreement who would take up um, saving yeah. that girl's life? Yes. So, it, so, yeah, so go tomorrow, ahead. Back to your story. I know <laughs> it's um, almost 20 years ago. But no emergency centers. You know, then, the like it was not as expanded. Yeah, as it, wasn't it was just like no. lots of sand and lots of, you know, so you, it was really difficult at the time to even know where it was. The, the, okay. the next hospital for me at the time was all the way in Nikoi, and I was just scared of this girl cannot die in my car, in my custody. Because my brother, my younger brother, had warned me, Muriel, let us not get into this. Mm. You, you are still fairly new here. Don't go and do, put us in oh. trouble. But, but thank God I had a family member in the car and I had the police in the car. So mm. they saw it. I just, so when I got back, the, the family, the community just said, Ah, they were hoping that something happened. I said, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh -uh. Nothing. The hospital rejected her. I can't remember exactly why the hospital rejected her. I think she had been there before. Something happened, whatever, so whatever. What? We can't even remember. I can't remember the story anymore. But so the point is that we really need either the inspector general of police, the same way we saw Governor Tawolu go to, is he a papa recently? Commanding those people. <laughs> to move. Maybe we need the Inspector General of Police to himself start going to hospitals in various places across exactly. the nation. Guys, you have to treat an emergency. Yeah. This police report thing, somebody needs to go, because until Nigerians see them, maybe, or maybe they come out verbally, put a police, um, uh, not, not, not a report, do a press release, something, or not a press release, and a, a, what do you call that thing? The, um, yeah, a communique. A media, media, yeah. media briefing, where you're yeah. constantly yeah. talking to us about this, because yeah. you can't, can't keep having the same story all the time. And then can we precautions okay. also, saying that if you do not attend to this, we will shut down your hospital you or something. Because, something, because, because hospital. there are even people with... I think that's it's like just even, I think that's, why, I know what, that's, that's, why, that's why these people are always um, apprehensive <gasps> and want to just reject yes. the person. So me, I feel we, we should um, act differently. Let's have some of the top people in the hospitals tell us where the concern is mm. so that the police can also work hand in hand yes, and people exactly. are safe. Yeah. And churches should also help. Churches should help. Mm. How? 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 Churches help. How? Because How? Churches help. Or religious organizations. How? You're not rushing that person to a church. Yeah, be. You're How? rushing the person to the hospital. That's where you take no, them. Sometimes you know, there used I to feel... be a time where people would rush them to pharmacies, or chemists, and they say, no, that's not a proper hospital. Take them, and then go to hospital, and they say you don't have a police report. I agree with you. We need to. We've called many times on this show. We've called the police. We need to start calling the hospitals to come and explain to us why mm. exactly. Tell us, even if it's behind the cameras. Yeah. Tell us what is yeah. happening. 
happening yeah. that is that makes you Rejects. forget your humanity in situations like this. And they, they, they actually there be swore. cost somewhere. I'm thinking there's cost somewhere. You know when people just get to the hospital and they say drop two hundred thousand, drop three hundred thousand. Mm. You say no, they say go and bring police report. No, that's See, there might be cost. That's somewhere. another point. See, yes. I remember there was a doctor. Remember mm -hmm. the doctor? Money and reject the there was a doctor that um, he was living in, in this area, Ketu, mm. and he was he was a good doctor. You know, he's now he has looked as a Canada. Good doctor, always helping. Okay. During the emergency situations, you he's always there to treat, but they never pay. When they're pregnant women, they go to him because oh, this doctor, I can't remember his name. This doctor was such a good doctor, he will treat you, he'll help you deliver your baby. But many people say, well, just beg her, please, oh, mm. God, I don't have money. And so sometimes you treat an emergency mm. and you don't get paid for that. Who's going to be responsible for yeah. this? At least with the police report, either government or somebody can take responsibility. So maybe also we need to see the side of the hospital owners. Maybe their issue is after I treat, mm. have the time, the medication, the injections I use, everything, it costs me money. Yeah. Who's going to take responsibility? Yeah. Some of the, these patients run yeah. home, they're well, somebody yeah. sticks them out of the hospital. So that's yeah. where health insurance so is supposed to come in. Exactly. Uh, how many, you know, how many of such people have a health insurance? Yes, there, so that's why we need NHIS to push that. That's why NHIS is yeah. what we need to also push. So that hospitals, in cases like that, they are covered. At least for the first, in an emergency, yeah. that cost is covered. Whatever happens, government is able to pay the hospital back. Let me hear from Nigerians. We're going to go on a break now. We'll come back, we'll open our phone lines to hear from Nigerians. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. 